Greetings, everyone, to this Sunday morning Easter celebration. I'm Pastor Sean. I'm so grateful that you guys are joining me wherever you're watching from all over the world. To my Destination Church family, this is strange. This is the first time in the history of my lifetime that there are churches all around the world and all around America on Resurrection Sunday morning that are empty. Uh, because of everything going on in our society right now, which I don't have to speak about, it's crazy how in one of the most sacred days uh, in Christianity, churches are just like this one today. They're empty. But here's the amazing thing. Today we're celebrating another place that was empty, a tomb. There was a tomb empty because the God that we serve beat death, hell, and the grave for us, for you and for me, and he got up again. We celebrate his risen victory this morning. This morning we're going to dive into the word of God together. So I pray right there where you're at with your family, with your friends, like and share this video. Get people watching, get in the comments, and let's prepare our hearts for the word of God today. I have two passages of scripture I want to get into and read to you guys this morning. The first one is in Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 1 through 10. And then if you would, flip a little bit over in your Bible and meet me in Acts chapter 3. I'll be right there. We're starting in Ephesians chapter 4 first. Let's read it. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. This morning I want to talk to you for a few moments along the lines of a place called space. A place called space. So many times in this season we, we'll hear uh, sermons about the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. A lot of preachers this morning, they're preaching about the crucifixion and what that means to us. Others are preaching about the resurrection and what that means to us. And I plan on hitting those both a little bit. But I want to talk about that place called space between when Jesus gave his life for us and he got up victorious for us. Because I believe that's a representation of, of a life process that every person watching me today is going to have to go through. There, there is this, this tension and this turmoil between who I used to be and who I want to be. Who I was and who God's calling me to be. And I believe that how we manage the place called space between who I was and who I will be determines how quick I can get where God's calling me to go. So let's get into this word heavy this morning. We just read together that Jesus led captivity itself captive and gave gifts unto men. He is the one we celebrate this morning. He's the yoke destroyer. He's the captivity captor. He's the all-powerful one. The one who comes to destroy and break every chain and every yoke from our lives. Everything that's been keeping you and keeping me from becoming the person that God's ordained us to be. Jesus Christ wants to break that stuff off, off of our life. And this morning, right where you're at, I want you to start to think about some of the things in your 
your life that you know hinder you from God's best for your life because today we're coming for those things. We're coming for those things today. Jesus came and lived a spotless life. Near his natural end, he found himself alone, praying so fervently for you and for me that the sweat began to turn to blood under the pressure of the sins of the world he was taking upon uh, himself. He came and he died a most gruesome death. He was turned on, betrayed, punished, mocked, hung on a cross. Literally, Jesus was given the death of a common criminal. It is amazing to me today, over 2,000 years later, to sit back and think that on a day not much different than the one that we're all living and experiencing today, God himself died. He gave his life for us. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to, to love me the way that he does. He didn't have to surrender everything. But not only did he die, he arose victorious because the grave couldn't hold him. His life, his sacrifice, and his ultimate victory was a pattern for each and every one of us. But what happened in that space between who Jesus was and who he was yet to become? What happened? In that time, I'm sure that the disciples themselves had a lot of uncertainty. What would, what would happen? Would he... Would he uh, resurrect the way that he had said? I'm sure they were afraid. I'm sure they were nervous. They didn't know what to expect. Sometimes in life, we go through things that causes us to say, God, where are you? You were just here. Now you're gone. Sometimes it seems like God is silent and God removes himself from the picture of our life because he wants to see if we'll survive until we see him or experience him again. It's in that place called space between where I used to be and where I'm going that character is formed in our life. And this Resurrection Sunday, I come to declare to someone that right now you are in process for purpose. And that process is going to make you into who God's called called you to be. I want to speak to you about this place called space today. I want to challenge every single one listening to me this morning that knows you are not who you will yet become to get your heart and life ready today. Be an expectation. You are not who God is calling you to be. And it feels like maybe you're stuck in this place called space because you've realized that change is not easy. Allowing myself to position my life in a way that gets me ready for next is not easy. In order for me to, to let go of some old things, to, to embrace new things, it sounds good. And we can say amen and we get excited, but it's not easy to change. It's not easy to embrace a new thing, to embrace new scenery. Who would you be this morning? You that are watching me in your home with your family. Who would you be if all the limitations came off of you? Who would you, I mean, if you could really, if you could really get free from that addiction, if you could really break out of that anger, if you could really, really get free from that, that, that lust or that pride or, 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 that, or, or that tendency to gossip or that, that, that jealousy that grabs your heart, who would you be if you could really be free of it? What could God do in your life if you ever got to the place where the pain from the abuse that you've walked through didn't dictate the rest of your, your day? That every night that you can't sleep because of anxiety or fear or that person watching me today, that it feels like your whole world came crashing down when you lost that loved one or at the death of someone that you loved or maybe you went through a nasty divorce. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but who could you be if you got free of all of that? If you really could bring all of your hurt, pains, and burdens to Jesus and you allowed him to heal those most broken places in your life, my goodness, who would you be? Who would you be if the real you is who the world saw every day? The person that God sees you as. Not the person you think you are. Not the person other people say, say you are. None of that. No, 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 no. Who, who would you be if who God says you are is who the world really seen? You know, here's the thing. What's worse in life 
is when we know that Jesus has freed us or we know that he's wanting to free us, but we feel stuck in this place called space between who we were and who we're going to be. You know, it was in the culmination of the Dark Knight movie trilogy. For any of you that watched it, it was a, a, a movie trilogy about Batman or the Batman. And Christian Bale played Batman in this series. It was in the, the culminating movie, it was called The Dark Knight Rises. Where in this movie, for you that haven't seen it, I'll give you a Cliff Notes version real quick. Batman in, in Batman Begins and then in The Dark Knight had achieved great victories. But when the third movie comes around, he experiences an enemy unlike anything he had seen before. This guy's name was Bane. And Bane really puts a beating on Batman. And it wasn't enough that Bane beat Batman, but he took Batman and he threw him in a prison. In this prison, the biggest problem with this prison is that the prisoners in the bottom of the prison, it was a giant pit, and they could literally every day walk to a certain place in the prison and look up and see the exit. They could see an exit that they could not attain. It is hard to be trapped in a place where you can see yourself out of it, but don't know how to get out of it. It is, a, it is a tough place to be in, to be able to see yourself free. You can see the exit, but you can't get to it. The crazy thing about this movie, now that I think about it, is there was some rocks that you could climb on to try to make the climb out of the pit. The problem is most people were too afraid to step out and make the climb to get out. And what would happen is when anyone would start to climb out of the pit, all of the other people who were stuck in the pit would come around and watch. It's amazing the people that will watch you trying to get out of where you're at, but they won't really support you and help you get out. It's amazing the people that will watch you. It's almost like there are some people in our lives today, they're watching us hoping we try to climb and still fall back in. In Batman, that's what happened. He saw his way out and he started climbing. But right when he was getting toward the end of the climb, there were some steps that were missing. And in order for you to climb out of that pit, you had to make an impossible jump, a leap of faith, so to speak. You had to, what happened ultimately in this movie, long story short, was Batman had to come to the place where he stopped fearing for his life. And he said, you know what? My purpose in what's happening outside of this prison is so great that I'm willing to take a leap of faith to attain it. Because I'd rather die getting out of this pit than live another day of my life in a place I'm not supposed to be in. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But would you dare take your leap of faith? Would you dare stop trying to live with all the other people satisfied being stuck in the pit? Stop staying in that place of brokenness and being down and allow the Lord, listen, take the leap of faith and know that if you find yourself leaping in Jesus, that he'll give you the power to escape the prisons that are holding you. This morning I come to talk to you about a man whose life was trapped in a prison. The ability to see freedom and not be able to attain it is a problem that causes many of us stuck in a place called space. It keeps us stuck there and moving into a place of change. This climb out of where you're trapped and climbing out of who you used to be into the new you is not easy. It reminds me, even this, 
Even what happened in Batman, it reminds me of going to, which I can't take my kids to Walmart now, but it, it reminds me of taking my kids to the grocery store. Please, someone explain to me. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Why are the candy bars by the register? Has anyone been checking out and you looked over and you saw that payday and you saw that Snickers and that whatchamacallit and that Hershey's chocolate bar? You, saw, you, walked, you were walking past and your kids are reaching over, grabbing bubble gum and they're grabbing Slim Jims and they're grabbing Bic lighters. Your kids don't need a lighter. They don't need a lighter. Why is it all right there? The only empty space is where the hand sanitizers used to hang, the little ones. Can't find those. Why is it that it's right by the, and Lord forbid you, you have a kid and you allow them to play, a, to, to look at a Pokemon card because you go in the Target, why they have the whole display right there. The movie you don't need, the stuff you don't need, it's right there by the exit because I've found out a truth in life that is the same as a truth in the grocery store. You're always more vulnerable on the way out. You're always more vulnerable on the way out. When you're on your way out of where you used to be. I'm not who I know, God. I'm not who I want to be yet. I know, I'm, I know, but I know I'm not who I used to be. And when you're on the way out of an old season into a new one, if you're not careful, you find yourself in a vulnerable place because the enemy wants to keep you trapped in a place called space. He gives you enough leeway to make you think that you have the strength to get out of this thing on your own. But this morning, I come to preach to you and let you know you don't have the strength to get out of this on your own but there's something that's happening between a cross and a resurrection there's something that's happening between when Jesus died for us and when he got up in that place called space something was happening in eternity and I'm going to talk to you about it before we're done today but let's let's go to Acts real quick let's I've got to I've, I must go to Acts today I got, I got to get to Acts. This way out for us positions us in life to have to navigate this place called space. The place called space refers to seasons and times in all of our lives when we're, when we're in a process called transition. And it is hard to be trapped and stuck in a place called transition. See, transition... And what I'm speaking to you about this morning requires change. The person who resurrected in Christ was not the same that died on Calvary, on Golgotha. There was a metamorphosis that occurred. This morning I'm speaking to someone that's been trapped in your cocoon too long. And what I'm trying to do is declare the butterfly to come free. The fact is change is not easy. And this morning... We're going to focus for the next 25 minutes on a passage of scripture that is full of transition to show you how someone met something that was unexpected while they were stuck in a place called space. Let's read. You're, listen, you, you're watching me right now. Let's, let's take a moment. Audience, participate. Make sure you're ready to go. If you got someone next to you, tap them. Just hit them, let them know, well, you know, we're social distancing, so maybe elbow them or give them a virtual high five or something. Get in the comments and virtual high five someone and let them know that they're in process this morning. Just say this or maybe put it in the comments this morning, I'm in process. I'm in process. And then put your next comment, say, but I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm not staying in a place called space. I'm moving. Why? Because transition requires movement. God blesses movement and you are on your way this morning maybe you're on your way to freedom from addiction or whatever it is freedom from anger freedom from whatever it is unbelief but you're on your way you're in process acts chapter 3 you should have it by now it says this now peter and john went up together they were moving the disciples themselves they're in transition they're moving they are now experiencing life in a way they had not experienced it over the last few years. Jesus had resurrected. 
Jesus had ascended. Now they were ministering for the Lord, but they couldn't see him anywhere. Watch what happens. They went up to, they went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. A certain man who had never walked a day in his life was being carried by other people every day so that he could beg and ask alms for those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. I need you to see this picture this morning. Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. When Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked, entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was the same one who sat begging at the temple gate. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. In this story, we find a man in the Bible who had been lame his entire life. He had never walked a single day. There came a point in time where people began to carry him to a place where he could sit and beg for money. You know, it's bad enough being broken, but it's a whole different scenario when people are carrying you to your place of brokenness. It's a whole other story when you feel like not only you're broken, but people are even carrying you to a place. It's hard to have to be carried by someone else to survive. Peter and John are on their way to church when they see this man and a decision has to be made. If you can read, if you can picture this in the Bible, in in your mind's eye what the Bible is saying, the man is sitting there begging, but he's not even looking at the people he's asking for money because he's stuck in a place called space. He's stuck not being who God's called him to be and not who he was because he's now he's grown enough that he has to beg. He's not in his mom and dad's house anymore where he gets stuff for free. He's got to go out and beg. And he's stuck and he's asking for help and he don't even look at the people that he's talking to. And Peter looks at him and says, hey, buddy, I need your attention for a minute. He said, I I don't have any money to give you, but I have something that's far greater than money. And he grabs him by the hand, picks him up, and we see one of the first major miracles done by the early church. This created a stir in the community. The fact is, the disciples themselves had to be in transition. They, they had to decide, am I going to, you, you can imagine Peter, what he was thinking when he was walking past. Am I, am I going to still talk about Jesus or am I going to do what I watch Jesus do? And he had to make a decision to pray for this guy. When this man is healed, it is amazing to me that initially the healing is not what the man wanted. What, what happened is not what the man was asking for. You know what that makes me happy about this morning, church? There's some of you are asking God for things and you're not even asking for the right stuff. Some of you think you need certain things in this place called space. And God is saying, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you exactly what you need. It's amazing that we serve a God that loves us enough. That even in the worst moments of life, when we think we know what we need, he knows what you need. And he showed up for this lame man. God knows what we need more than we do. This man was probably praying, Lord, send me someone to bless me a little bit. And God said, no, I have somebody that's coming and they're going to bless you a lot. But they're not going to bless you in the way that you thought it was coming. 
God usually has other plans than our plans. When the lame man fixed his gaze on him, uh, on them, he got what he never thought possible. You know, sometimes we got to get, you know, sometimes in order to get what God has for us, we got to change our focus. We have to change what we're looking at. We have to change our scenery. Can you, you know, one of the first things, I don't have time to preach about this or go there, but it's in my mind, so I want to say it while I'm making sure I'm not going too long this morning. Can I share one thing with you? You know, one of the first things that changed in this man's life after his healing? One of the first things that changed in his life after his healing was the necessity of the people who used to carry him. Let me say that again for somebody. When you're in a place called space, one of the first things that God likes to change for all of us are the people that we have been depending on all along when we wasn't depending on the Lord. One of the reasons so many people can't get through transition is we're not willing to shed ourselves of the people who've had their hands on us while we were in process. One of the first things that changed for this man was at least the, the necessity and the nature of the relationship of the men who were carrying him every day to the church. My goodness, why doesn't it talk about those? Who, sir, who was bringing you every day? We don't talk about those guys. Who was, this? it's amazing how God will make people you thought necessary in your life unnecessary in a place called space. My goodness, I feel that for someone. Someone's about to lose some dead weight off of your life, some, some opinions, some people that were carrying you. You're not going to need them to carry you anymore because in this place called space, God's going to bring you the type of healing that will change your life forever. Here's the amazing thing. This man didn't even have enough faith to ask God for a miracle, but Jesus provided it anyway. Isn't it amazing how God healed this man despite his own expectations? This man had no expectations that day that this was going to be the day that he was receiving healing. He had no expectations of that whatsoever. But God had other plans. It is amazing how God has other plans for you. There's somebody watching me right now that you are that lame man. You are stuck. You are stuck begging and pleading and don't even know where your next thing comes from. But you don't understand God's already preparing a way of healing for you. He's already preparing to pick you up from where you've been. Listen, you don't even have the faith to ask God to get you out of the thing that he's already determined to get you out of. That's how good of a God we serve. God is good and he's good all the time. He's not good like you and me are good. He's not good when he wants to be every once in a while. He's good all of the time. And for you that know that God is good all the time take about five seconds right there in your house and go ahead and stop and give him a praise right there just give him a praise just say God I thank you for being good I thank you that even in my broken places when I was lame and couldn't walk God you picked me up and you gave me the strength and somebody right now watching this you need to declare that by faith because you feel locked down you feel like you're lame right now you feel like you'll never get up from the addiction or the hurt hurt or the pain or the betrayal. You feel like you'll never get up, but Jesus is showing you in a place called space that in eternity he's still working. We're going to talk before we're done today. We are going to talk. The man didn't even ask. He just wanted a little bit of money. He just wanted a little bit of money. That's all he wanted. A little bit of money. And God gave him a miracle. This right here brings me courage. Because it reminds me that God knows what we really need. The problem for many of us in this place this morning is we're like the lame man. We are stuck in this war between who we've been and who people think we are. Who we are currently wrestling with and who Jesus calls us to be. And sometimes it seems like God is not even active in these moments, but he's working things out. He is working things out. Many times in these moments, these play, this place called space where I don't feel them and I feel broken, 
is when he's most active in my life. It's in moments, write this down, write this down if you're taking notes this morning. It's in moments that I can't see him correctly or I don't see him at all that he's working the most. Just because I can't see God in the middle of my mess does not mean a thing. Write this one down. In moments where life seems unstable, where life isn't making sense and I don't know what's going on, in moments where I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm stuck, I'm not who I was, but I'm not who I'm called to be. My life is uneven and unstable and I feel like things are going crazy. I'm telling you this morning, that's when he's working. That is when he is working. When you don't see him, he's working. When other people seem to have to carry you because your life is unstable, he's working. In moments of transition, when we are moving from death to life, he's still working. You know when the old you is fighting to remain alive, this morning God has not forgotten you. He's working. Someone say it down in the comments. He's working. He's working on me right now. He's working in me right now. He's working things out for me. He's meeting me in my place of brokenness when I don't even understand. It's in these moments of transition when we are moving from death to life that he is still working on our behalf. I'm fighting, and right now I know someone's fighting. Don't fight that conviction. You're stuck in a place called space between who you've been and who you're called to be, but don't allow yourself to get stuck there. Don't fight the conviction that you're feeling from the Holy Spirit this morning. Your freedom is too important. He is still working. He's working when I'm not the old me, but I'm struggling to become the new me. You know who I'm talking to and what I'm talking about. I'm saved enough not to go to hell, but I'm not saved enough not to want this drink. I'm saved enough to make heaven, but I'm not saved enough to not stay out the club. You know who I'm talking to this morning. I mean, you know, you, you're not who you used to be, but you're not who you are yet. You're fighting. Don't Hold on to the new. In this moment, in this place called space, learn what the Lord is doing. Lean into him. Because it was in a place called space that Jesus was winning the victory for each and every one of us. Jesus was in transition in a place called space between the cross and the resurrection. We read when we opened up this message that he descended and led captivity captive. He descended in eternity to make possible for us in time the ability to walk in freedom. Listen, when the Lord descended into hell, it's not something that he did once. It's something that he's doing in many of our lives right now. He's willing to meet us right where we are. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but here you, we come to the Lord, all of us come broken. We're like that lame man. We're lame, we're broken, we're a mess, we're addicted, we've been abused, we've been walked out on, we're frustrated, we're irritated. There is someone watching me this morning, you listen, with all this craziness, you don't even know what's the point of living. You're struggling. There's someone watching me right now. You're fighting suicide. You're fighting the desire to end it all. This is serious what we're doing today. This is not a game. This is not a joke. Lives are on the line. You're stuck in this place, but you don't understand that when he descended, he descended for you and he descended for me. It's not something that just happened 2,000 years ago. Right now, he's descending into the middle of our mess, willing to take your captivity captive. There are people watching me. You are imprisoned by a past you can't seem to escape. You are trapped in a life that it feels like you hate. There's too many sleepless nights of anxiety and fear, broken from mental scars, wrapped in sickness and fighting disease, dealing with, with iniquity and sin, and it's right there that he meets us. It is right there in this place called space between who we were and who we're called to be that he's still working. My question is for you watching me as I close today is how satisfied are you with who you are right now 
is the person who looks at you in the mirror every day. Are you happy with what you see? Is the Lord happy with what he sees when he's looking over our lives? My question is, are you growing in the place called space? Are you growing in transition? Are you embracing the changes and the miracles that the Lord is trying to bring your way? Or are you determined to stay stuck? Jesus literally led captivity captive between a cross and a resurrection. He descended. The Bible says that he came to bring gifts to men. This morning on this Resurrection Sunday, the greatest gift that the Lord has ever offered us is the gift of salvation. He wants you free today. He wants you free from everything that's been hindering you. There is a greater future for you that's waiting. Don't get stuck in this place called space, this transition season between who you were and who you're called to be. Learn from the lame man that if I fix my focus on who's calling my name, it can all change. This morning, Jesus is talking. He's calling each and every one of us into a future with him, out of the old, into the new. Will you embrace it today? For all of you that are watching this, my prayer is that the favor of God be upon each of you. We're gonna to pray together. And I know that just a few moments ago, I prayed over everyone and I ask you if you received Jesus Christ before, but I feel led to do that again because maybe someone has joined in at the end of the stream and you weren't here for the beginning part. So I want to pray for you. If you're watching me today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right now, here's what I need you to do. The Bible says those that call on the name of the Lord will be saved. It says in Romans 10, 9 and 10 that if we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the salvation is ours. No strings attached. It's faith, belief, and confession. That's all. We come to Jesus as we are. You don't have to clean up. You don't have to fix up. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to be free of all of your mess and all of your issues. The Bible says come as you are. People got this, this bad sense of what the gospel really is and what the church is about. I hear people say, well, if I go to church, then hell will freeze over. Trust me, hell would have been froze. The majority of you guys watching me today from Destination Church, hell would have froze over when you came. But it did. It's still in business. But today we're in the business of emptying it. So right now, you that are watching me, you can be as sure for heaven as if you're already there. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords gave his life for you. He died. Then in a place called space, he worked out the potential to heal every broken place in your life. Your captivity was taken captive. Your sin, your sickness, your disease, your iniquities, your addiction. He, he took it captive. He led it in a procession. He, he won once and for all the victory for you and for me. Will you lean into that today? Will you say yes to Jesus? Will you say yes to a future with him? Will you step out of religion and into relationship? If that's you, I want you to call on him right where you're at. You say, well, I don't know how to. Well, good, I'm gonna pray. You just pray after me, just do it right now. Just say this, say, King Jesus, I'm here right now because I need you in my life. I believe that you gave your life for me as a sacrifice for my sin. I want to be everything that you've called me to be. Today I receive your gift of salvation. I receive you as my Lord. Come into my life. Save me. Help me know what it is to know you as a real and living Savior. I thank you for accepting me and loving me just as I am. Make me in your image as my king, and I will always praise you in Jesus' name. I ask these things, amen and amen. And if you prayed that prayer with me this morning, I want you to text New Day to the number you see on the screen. There'll be a number right there that says, just text New Day to that number. Let us know. We want to know about you. We want to connect with you. We want to let you know what's next because salvation is not the end of a journey. It's a beginning, and we're excited to welcome you into the family of God. And for all of you watching me this morning that are saved and going through that feel stuck in a place called space, I'm joining my faith with you this morning and I'm believing that the greatest day that God's ever had for you is just around the corner and you're going to survive this season of transition. Just know this this morning, God is working. 
He's working in the middle of the darkest seasons of our life. You might not realize this, but even in the middle of all this coronavirus, God is working. He's doing new things. He's, he's, he's transitioning people. He's changing some things. He's touching folks. And right now, this morning, for you that are watching me, you say, I know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, Pastor, and I'm here in agreement with Can I pray over you this morning? And I bless you before we move on today in celebration. Father, I just thank you for all those who are watching. For all of my church family and friends, for all my brothers and sisters in Christ, God, I speak life and peace into them. I thank you that the favor and mercy of God rests upon them in everything they do. God, help us not to be people that get stuck in a place called space, a place between who we've been and where we're going. Let us survive. Let us navigate transition knowing that you're with us in the middle of it. Even when we don't see you or feel you, we know you're working. And you're working all things out together for the good of those that love you and to the call according to your purpose. God, we thank you for this. And we thank you. Today we celebrate your resurrection. And I thank you for all those that are watching me all around the world. God, I pray that your favor and blessing and, and that your purpose would explode on the inside of them in a way they never thought possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for coming to church with us today. We just, we just say, you, we're so grateful for each and every one of you. And so I'm asking each and every one of you to like and share these videos. Stay connected. Become a part of Destination Church because it's not going to be long, but we're going to be back together in this building. And I'm excited about what God is doing in each and every one of our lives. So may God richly bless you. I'll see you again next Sunday morning. Wow, what an amazing Easter message we just heard from Pastor Sean. Listen, we want to hear from you guys. What do you think? What is this message of hope and inspiration bringing to you and your family? And we also want you to stay connected with us through all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Don't forget about our kids' experience on YouTube. And also on our Facebook page, we have um, several groups that you can be involved in. We're getting ready to launch online connect groups here um, in the spring. And so don't forget to check out our website. That's where you can find all the information to everything you need to know about Destination Church. And also, for those who have partnered with us, we want to say thank you. Your partnership means the world to us. It's the way that we keep the message of hope and inspiration going through Destination Church. So if you are wondering, how can I be a part of this ministry? How can I be a part of the greatness that's going on through Destination Church family? You can do that on our website, www.mydestination.cc. If you want to partner with us, it's um, backslash give. So anyway, guys, listen, thank you for joining us. I want you to have an amazing Easter Sunday, and we will see you back next weekend.